Hi, beautiful. We're gonna talk about energy audits. I recommend doing an energy audit for at least a day or two quarterly each year because even if your external world hasn't changed much, your internal state surely has. In an earlier video, we talked about time audits that help us get a better idea of how we're actually using our time and observing patterns and noticing what our default impulses are for how to use unexpected free time so we can optimize that. Sometimes our default behaviors actually cause anxiety. A lot of us are more addicted to anxiety and suffering than we'd like to admit. It doesn't sound logical to seek out pain, but when you have a dysregulated nervous system from trauma or just from chronic stress, we actually become accustomed to the neurochemical hits of having these highs and lows. And so peace feels boring. <laughs> we'll sometimes even seek out harmful one-sided relationships, for example, especially in the case of codependency. Or we'll do things that make us feel miserable inside, even though it has no clear benefit in our life. Like for example, watching a whole bunch of horrifying news stories about something we can't do anything about. There's no logical reason to do that. And of course, there's nothing wrong with being generally well-informed. We wanna be able to have intelligent conversations with others. But Stephen Covey's book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, has some excellent advice that when you stay focused on your own sphere of influence, that's really solid advice because that's where you can actually make a positive impact. Now, if you happen to be a general in a war zone, of course, you have to stay immersed in the details of everything that's going on in that scenario because it is within your sphere of influence. It's your responsibility. So ask yourself, what are you responsible for? And how can you lift up that sphere? Where, how can you bloom where you're planted and, and do good and nourish the garden that you're in? Worrying about someone else's responsibilities that you have no control over I'm gonna suggest that is a complete waste of your time. And just as importantly, how does it make you feel? Truly, how does each particular habit, behavior, or activity make us feel and why? The why is also important. And that leads me into energy tracking and how that works. I absolutely love energy tracking because it's always eye-opening. For a few days, I simply know when I have, anytime I have an energetic shift after different activities, for example, if I suddenly feel better or elevated, or if I notice I'm in an energetic slump, then I will know what preceded that. And I look for patterns. Now we're human beings and our energy is always gonna be shifting. Right now, for example, I'm fasting. So I know my energy is lower than usual because I haven't eaten in almost 24 hours. So of course, physically, I'm gonna be a little bit lower energy, but I still feel peaceful inside. And I know that I'll feel amazing tomorrow because I always feel, fasting is tough for me, but I always feel so good after. So again, I don't note these things to determine what's bad or good. Sometimes good things can lower your energy and negative things could raise it. <laughs> I'm just looking at the patterns and I'm making observations as if I'm a scientist who is studying my own life. It's really fascinating. I don't go into judgment because that's a waste of time. I simply observe and I learn about my patterns. And that allows me to make decisions and tweak things if I need to. Sometimes the things I'm doing are fine, but the attitude that I'm bringing to it isn't, for example, and I can start making those connections. There are a lot of different ways to approach this, so please feel free to innovate and use a system that works for you. You can track moods and energy level by making little notes next to your day planner schedule. For each little activity, you can put a little note on it. I usually do one to five with a one being low energy, sad, five, high energy, blissful, <laughs> and then I kind of put it in between there. Um, or you can make a separate tracker on a little sheet of paper on the left column, you write down the activities you're doing and then, or the thoughts that you were having 
uh, whenever it was that your mood shifted. And then on the right hand column, you write down what the resultant mood or energy level was based on that thought, activity, that scenario, that interaction, that person, place, or thing. And as a little side note, I just wanna point out again, that just because something drains your energy doesn't automatically mean it's bad or that it's a poor use of your time. We aren't judging anything here, we're observing. Maybe you know if you're gonna do a certain thing, you need to build in some recharge time because even though it's important to you and you value it, you have to recharge afterwards. I used to find that spending time helping, I used to find that, I used to find that spending time with my children and helping them got draining. But as a mom, that's simply not negotiable. I'm not gonna spend less time with my kids. But what I was able to realize is that it wasn't necessarily the kids that were draining me, it was my lack of presence when I was with them. And as I was more present, I was having more fun with them and I was finding it more energizing. So it's not just important to note that your energy changed, but also get curious about the why. The why is super, super important here. Maybe my crappy attitude's the problem, not just the hectic reality of being a mother. And if I could really tune in and be there with them, it was more enjoyable. And that's true for most things. It was more energizing than when I was trying to tune things out or multitask or I was kind of being with them, but I was also in my, in my head, future projecting what I was gonna do next instead of just being here with them in the now trusting that everything will fall into place as I go through my day. But sometimes we actually do realize that a particular person, place, or thing, or activity all by itself is just very draining for us and it doesn't bring us a lot of reward. And then we can start looking for solutions. Is this something that I can outsource to someone who enjoys it more? Is it something I can just stop doing or let go of? If not, is this something that I can at least time manage differently so that it's less straining and more enjoyable. Maybe it's really annoying to try and get something done right before bedtime, but it's something that you might actually enjoy if you did it first thing in the morning. So it's about moving little puzzle pieces around, but you wouldn't even be aware of these different pieces if you weren't doing an energy audit and becoming conscious of how you're actually expending your energy. Now, I can only speak for myself, but what I've found is that when I prioritize, intentionally prioritize the essential things, like scheduling in quality family time, meditation, prayer, reading uplifting books, doing the things that really matter to me personally, then everything else seems to just magically fall into place around those things a lot more smoothly because I'm more calm and I'm, I'm happier. But when I try to go, 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 get it done, produce, 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 and I stop being a human being and go into being a human doer, and I start putting my own and my family's well-being onto the back burner, I actually become less productive. It may seem counterintuitive, but burning the candle on two ends usually gets you less light, not more. It gets you less energy, not more. The ancient Greeks believed that there were two forms of time. One being kairos, which is a subjective form of time. It's relative time that can be stretched or condensed perceptually as needed in our perceptual experience. And chronos is the ticking of the clock. That's more objective and universal. So I'm gonna talk about that in a future video because time mastery is so essential to living a happy life of well-being and calm. It's so important. But for today, let's start doing some energy mastery. And if you wanna participate in a little challenge assignment with me, then just take a little note today. You know, maybe do this for the next couple of days, for two or three days. Take a little note when your energy shifts and jot down what preceded it and any subjective thoughts that you have, any insights you have while you're pondering that shift. Because I promise, things will come up. You'll start having some awarenesses around some areas where you've had blinders on before. And if you can, you can do this. You can actually do this separately or together with a time audit that I spoke about in the last video. So you can look that up if you're interested in doing both simultaneously. All you would do is note next to each event in your time audit, how you felt doing it and take notes on any insights that pop up for you. So it's a really powerful tool, whether you do it with or with 
out a time on it. It just helps you recalibrate your energy. I'm Bex Sato. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a beautiful day. Love you. Mwah.